What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets. This has been a very frustrating and annoying day as I browse through, browse through social media, watching all these hot takes and how these scenarios play out. And there's so much ridiculousness out there, but whatever. That's what the world we live in, and so be it. So the first thing is, Mekhi Becton injury, the outcome today doesn't really surprise anybody. We kind of had a feeling yesterday. I even knew once you heard Robert Sala talk about in the press conference, he was trying to portray positivity. They didn't want to panic anybody. Also, you got to keep in the back of your mind, they could have been negotiating with Dwayne Brown or whoever else. So you don't want to show your hand. You kind of cross your fingers, you pray, and you see what happens. So today was no surprise. Secondly, this injury has nothing to do with the same old Jets. Save me that bullshit already on August 9th. Cut me a break. You know what injuries are? They're called a part of the NFL. No matter how they happen, whether it's weight, freak injuries, tripping, falling, whatever the fuck it is, that happens. It's called adversity. And good teams and good organizations find ways to overcome it. And we're not even at our first preseason game yet. Furthermore, the Jets have, what, three veteran offensive linemen? You got McGovern, you got Fant, you got Tomlinson. There's plenty of leadership there. They're mentors, they're experienced. You can handle it. You can handle this kind of adversity. Also, you have, a, you have an improved tight end set. You can change your formations. There's a lot of ways you can hide a, an offensive line that's possibly struggling or a guy that you have to replace late. The only benefit is it's earlier on where you haven't played a preseason game yet. So all that stuff, it's like, and the other thing is, this isn't derailing their season. The season's not over. The Jets aren't going to only win four games now. Like, come on already with this nonsense. Like, I get everybody wants to dump on the Jets and be negative and be like, you know, play the victim and, oh, woe is us. Not the way it works, man. Good teams and good cultures and good, organiz good organizations overcome this. And you see it every year. You see teams win with three or four linemen that have been replaced throughout the season. Guys getting signed off the street. They fill in, you coach them up, and you figure it out. That's what coaches are getting paid for. That's what these veterans get paid for. Everybody, this is not, you know, a, 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 just a, a season ender by no means. So then the next step of this is the blame game. Who do we want to blame? Well, okay, is it just the Jets? Is it Becton? Or is it both? And I'm going to say it's both. And I'm going to tell you why. So the first thing is, Obviously, Becton wasn't in the best of shape when he came to mandatory minicamp, right? He didn't, he wasn't where he wanted to be, and that's on him. Whatever, whatever path he took to get there wasn't the right one, okay? But it's not training camp. So what he did was he committed and made whatever adjustments he had to to get into much better shape in training camp. Now, the first day of training camp is not the first day of season. So you can say, you know what, get in the shape of training camp, then you can work yourself into game shape by the time the season starts. Is that the perfect scenario? No, but not every player is the perfect scenario. You're not going to have 22 guys that commit to every aspect of the game and say, you know what, we are all perfect role model players. Everybody's different. They handle themselves different. I see with pro fighters all the time. You have some pro fighters, you know, two weeks out or 20 pounds off weight, and you have some guys that are two weeks out and they are in the best shape of their lives. Everybody handles their weight differently. It is what it is, but the whole goal is the same. So Mekhi Becton came into camp and made weight. That was what he had to do. So however he got there, whether you may agree or disagree with it, it is what it is, but now he's there. So once he gets there, it's how do you get him to be in the best of his ability to play on, in week one? And this is where the Jets kind of come into place because the Jets tell everybody he's ready to go, he's off the PUP, which is where he started off at, and he could practice. And you watch him practice, and it seemed pretty clear to my untrained eye, my fan eye, because I'm only a fan, that he was limping around and he wasn't in the best of shape. So my first question is, as the Jets, why are you putting him out there? Why, why not keep him on PUP for another week? Are you scared of the backlash? Are you scared of the scrutiny? Are you trying to pre protect the player from the scrutiny? Like, why is that? Or why don't you limit his reps even more? Or once you see him limping, which it was, why not pull him back? See, let's scale it back a little bit because... I don't need you to win reps in August. I need you to win games, help us win games in September, October, November. Like the goal is week one. The goal isn't to be a training camp hero. The goal isn't to, to control the narrative. The goal isn't all this stuff. So I don't understand that at all. So then once he put the knee brace on, and you know, you see it, you're like, this a lot of this just doesn't make sense. Like, why continue to have him out there? I mean, and obviously conditioning was an issue. And I give Beckton credit for this. He was grinding through it, he was trying to figure it out, he was trying to overcome a lot. But the Jets could have helped them as well. And that's where I don't understand how they handled this. And furthermore, I don't understand why the media didn't ask more questions. Like, today's press conference with Salah was a fucking joke. Well, you know, and Salah even mentioned himself. They saw him limping in practice. 
So you see him limping on the same leg that he hurt, and you think it's okay, and you're to keep trotting him out there and keep pushing him. Fuck putting him on a pitch count. Take him off the field. You know what? He's not where we want him to be right now, but we still have time. Let's save him for ourselves. Let's protect our investment. Let's protect our tackle and take him out for a little bit. Let him get back to speed or say, you know what? We got to give him more treatment. We got to do something else. But to keep trotting him out there, for what reason? It serves no purpose. So now here you are. You lost him for the year, most likely. And now his career is kind of like you don't know where it's going to go. And because you had last year out for the season, this year out for the season, physically and mentally, how does he overcome that? And that's a lot. And that was a lot for him coming into this because like I mentioned in my last video, when you're overcoming that kind of injury, there's so many, there's only hurdles mentally and physically you've got to overcome. The first hit, the first lateral movement, the first time somebody rolls into your leg, there's all these different things. And then you're worried about, you know what, I got to prove myself. I got to get my conditioning up. A lot of different things happen here. And it's unfortunate because I was rooting for him. And for the fans that are just shitting on him now, you're assholes because you're not really fans then. The I told you shows and you're a bust and you're this, you're that. He's a human, man. He tried. And nobody is perfect. Like, it's just everybody, like, he should, like, the one comment I saw today was, he's got to act like Carl Lawson. He's not Carl Lawson, man. He's not. So let's not stop comparing to that. She could have did a better job. He didn't, but he still came to camp. And once he got to camp, it didn't work out. But the reason why didn't it work out, and if we're being completely transparent, the way the Jets have handled injuries in the past has not been good. And that's with, under Joe Douglas as well. So there's a lot of different things here. It's ugly. It's annoying. But you move on. And it's unfortunate. First, that's the, probably the most important thing because now you got to reshuffle your line. Do you keep George Fan at left tackle, which is my preference, or you do, move, do you move him to right tackle and bring in a new left tackle? The most important thing is now is just getting a cohesive group as fast as possible. And it's unfortunate because you're not going to probably see the starting five play together in their first preseason game for however many reps the you know the, the starters play. But you got to find ways to coach them up as fast as possible and, and see what happens. But I, I don't want to hear excuses for losing. I don't want to hear excuses for why the team can't recover from this. This is the culture you're talking about. Joe Douglas has got to do his job because if, you know, he could have signed, you know, tackle depth prior to this even happening. I mean, he had Dwayne Brown in the, in the stadium on Saturday. That was before the injury even happened. He could have signed him then. So there's a lot of different things here, a lot of finger pointing. To me, it's just annoying as shit. I'm tired of it. I just want to see this team do well. I'm, it's just... It's a setback, but you, you move forward. And there's there's a lot of really positive things going on here. You still have a lot of young playmakers. You have a very good defense that's gonna, that should be much improved from last year, and, and you let it all play out. But let's see, what a, what a time this is. It's just, it's almost like there was too much positivity and something had to happen to kind of disrupt the whole thing. And here we are, and it's just unreal.